everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art shop, and today we're going to be showing you how you can paint this Aries-themed astrological star gnome. Uh, that's the whole thing, really. He's just a gnome that's based on Aries here on the top of a mountain. I'm explaining to you how to paint this cutie pie with this cutie sheep and all the cutie objects step by step. To help me do that on the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He is going to be switching cameras, making sure you can see the action of the brush and the color mixing. That way, as I'm explaining a technique or a color mix, you're really able to get a good view of that happening. Uh, the Star Gnomes are a monthly series. Uh, this is our third one this year. We are going to do all 12 astrological signs. So if you have a birthday that hasn't been represented, keep your eye out because your gnome will be coming up. I'm actually pretty excited about this series. If you don't draw, I'm going to show how to draw this all in actually because these guys are sort of fun and I can show you how to draw it in. But if you're not a person who draws, check the description below. Or if you go to the artsherpa.com, you will see a traceable tab. Open that up, search for gnome, find your traceable, download it, and you can use the transfer method to get him on the canvas. Don't know how to do that? That's okay. I have a video about that on how to trace it on. In fact, I have two videos about that. Let's just go with I have two videos about almost everything, but probably a playlist. <laughs> Because I've been on YouTube a minute, and I've made a couple thousand videos, so not really a couple thousand, but it's getting to be over a thousand, moving on towards the next number yes. at this point. All right, let's talk about the materials. This is what we're painting today. We'll put that aside so we can remember that. I have a 9 by 12 stretched canvas. This is just an economical canvas that you can purchase. It's not anything particularly special. Very few colors on today's painting. I have uh, uh, quinacridone magenta. I have ultramarine blue, titanium white, Myers black, burnt sienna, and cad yellow medium. And that is what I'm going to be using for this whole painting, which is kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to be doing steps in this, and those will be time stamped later. What that lets you do is that lets you come back over the scroll bar. You can check the description. You can check the comments, and you'll see a chapter mark and what time it's at, or you can scroll over the bar, you can find your place again really easily. Mm -hmm. And that is a very nice thing. So, woo, now that we've done materials, you can do step one, John. Can I? Mm. I was mesmerized <laughs> by your mashup of pop culture. Where'd I mash up pop culture? Well, so you got the TARDIS, oh, this Snoopy, isn't... and Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know it, did you? I don't know what I actually am, <laughs> if not pop culture. You this morning we were talking to a friend of ours and the number of TV references were getting deep. Like I have very few friends that I can really talk TV with. And this particular friend we've known since college, it, what's great is I can like reference almost any show. And it's very rare the show both of us haven't seen, but then John is not in the show, but our friend is a actor, animator, director, writer. And he's in Solar Opposites, episode three. Yep. So we're kind of excited about that, celebrating that success from our friend. Because it is, it is hard to make it in Hollywood. Yeah. It is Hollyweird. I don't, I don't want to out his, uh, because I don't know stage, I don't know what his SAG name is. So I'm not sure. Oh, if really? I'm not sure if it's the same as his. Do you feel like we can, give name. I feel like we're I'll, not I'll, close if we I'm don't know his SAG next, name. I'm going to out him next time. We're going to out him. We're going to out him. I'll tell you a secret. He's in my featured channels. Oh, that's true. He is. So you can I find did. Him. I featured him. He's definitely featured. All right. Okay. So step one, sir. Oh, I did that, didn't I? I don't know. I you don't pay attention to what you, you did. I don't pay attention to what you do, though. I thought I did it. You did. Okay. I just don't pay attention to what you do. <laughs> your job is your job. So the beginning of this is going to be a really fun swirly thing. And to do my swirly technique, I'm going to use a one inch oval mop. Now there's a lot of different kinds of oval mops. Like I have here a Princeton and I have here an ultimate varnish. This is like under 10 and this is like 30. There's a big range in these. What these all have in common that you're looking for is synthetic filaments. You don't want natural hair like goat. You don't want that. And you want this sort of shape here. So if you guys are seeing that, uh, this one is not even called an oval mop either. <laughs> it's a one and a half, one and a quarter. But this is what you're looking at in the size range. The reason I give you these description, guys, is that brushes are called all kinds of different things. Even when they're the same darn thing. I don't know why anybody would do that, but it happens. So that is what is going on. 
And we're going to be doing kind of a sweepy, brushy sky today, which I think is a lot of fun. To start out, I'm going to get the brush wet, not too wet, a little wet. And I'm going to load up with some white paint. Yes, we start with white today. Let's pretend we are Bob doing the liquid white. This is actually not too dissimilar of a concept. Um, just so you guys know, you can do any of those techniques that you see Bob do on with acrylic. Absolutely, there is a product or medium for that. So that's why I never feel bad about referencing it because I know you can get there. Sometimes there's faster ways of doing it in this medium. Yes, generally there is. So I just want kind of like a wet surface that's not too wet with white paint. That's going to help me get the blendy streaky bit. And let's start out with some blue. I'm just barely dipping in water. And I really want you to see this. I'm barely dipping. See how that's barely touching mm -hmm. in the water? And that's because I don't want to be pulling a whole lot of water into this brush. A mop can carry a lot of water. And I don't want to be carrying that in. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to be making these nice little streaky lines down. This is that cold mountain air coming down, kind of curving it. There we go. Just curving that down so you can see how those little curves are going. Then I'm going to rinse out. And we're going to come back up from the bottom with a little pink. Sometimes I like to flip the canvas over just so that I can kind of. Makes it easier for you. Yeah. Everybody likes the pink. It's the, it's like. The pink is the cat's meow in this one. What's the, what's the pink that sings? The opera pink. Opera, opera pink. pink. That's right. Sorry, guys. It happens. You can you can unsubscribe if you want. Like, I'm, did she just sing Opera Pink? I'm off to watch Petos. I can't. Like, I have to walk you into that one because it's a pun and a dad joke rolled into one. No, it's it's what it was made for you. Pun and dad jokes are made for you. There we go. Just bringing this in here. This is just a very happy little brushy sky, right? So we've got this coming up, and then if you want, you can get a little more pink on here. Maybe, and a little white, a little pink, and come up here and say, brush a little bit of a strange cloud. Going in that way. I like to play with the clouds actually quite a lot. I'm going to bring a little comma here. And a few little comma strokes here. And that's how I get... Uh, that part of it, if you want to bring any blue back down, you absolutely can. It's really up to you. And here's something that's important to know about this particular sky is that you can do two coats. So if you're like, ah, oh, my sky isn't there, you can do this one's come back and do that again. I'm going to put a little more blue up top because I'm looking at it in the camera and it doesn't seem that blue. I'm going to bring a little blue down. Oh, it's very blue. All right, just make sure that our blue is there as well. You want more blue. You can do that. You can. You? you can blue up. The clouds can blend into each other. So the trick is just to have nice long strokes that wind. You can see I just pulled that through. And then anything you want to put back, you just put back. So this is that kind of sky where it's like you can play a bit. I'm going to get a little white on it this time. Kind of play with these little clouds here. A little pink. There we go. This, so these are some strange little mountain updrafts that are going on. Mm -hmm. You know, have at it, play with it, be fun. But that's the basic trick of that. This stroke that you're doing where you go down like this, this is called an S stroke. Mm -hmm. So we've got curved strokes here and S strokes here. But happily for all of you who did Acrylic April last year, no arabesque strokes. Because <laughs> everybody remembers fire chicken. I'm going right. to have a whole arabesque stroke class, I think, after last year. It's I like, like it. I was like, everyone will like it. It's arabesque. And they were like, no, don't like it. Don't like it at all. Don't like it. Looks like a fire chicken. <laughs> fire phoenix chicken. Right? 
I liked it. I liked all the fire chickens, actually. They were, I honestly, you're, sometimes your least favorite class is my favorite class. I'm going to try this. John's going to put up a step two, and then we will go on to the sketching. I'll put up a step two, but only after she's done drying. So that way, if you're on the next step, you don't have to wait through the drying. But if you are here in the drying and waiting anyway, you should click the subscribe button. Look, I got a button. So, you hit the button, I hit the button, we'll both do the subscribe button. See, there it goes. Alright, and if you're there, and you may as well, like, get notifications. Now, you can either get notifications by punching their bell button, or if you send a text message to the phone number 33222 and send the Art Sherpa, all one word, then a little gnome will come whisking you out there and send an, S an SMS to you when we go live most of the time. So pretty. What's up? Nothing. I was just saying that we had some gnomes that deliver SMSs. Did they go out and deliver them? They did earlier. Oh, we told people? Mm -hmm. I just we told them. We weren't secretive they... about it? Nope. But see, now, now that you're done drying. I mean, we're going to run out of text in April, so you got to you gotta follow us in April because we run out like week two. <laughs> the drying is done, dry. and it's so... step two. We're going to sketch it in. <laughs> Sketching in the gnome, gnome, gnome. I hope everybody likes my, my little Aries base ram. I really wanted it to be like a mountain, earth, but you know, earth sign. And I was like, what's the top of an earth, earth? And then since we're going into the next one, which I think is an air sign, isn't it an air sign next month? I don't know. I felt like there was a, there was an artistic choice that I made here. I thought it was good. Maybe it wasn't good, but I felt like it was I good at the time. Astronomy, not I know because you would never stop reminding me in school. Now, I'm going to sketch in some stuff with slightly darker colors than you would want. You want to use chalk. Chalk. You know, a chalk pencil. And we're going to talk about the freehanding of this. When you want to draw something and you want to make sure that it stays in scale, I find that it's a good idea to give myself breaks. Breaks. So if I know I want my mountain to be like about to stop here and I want my gnome to his hat to kind of go there, I give myself a beginning and end line. Which lets me know whatever I've got going on, I don't want to have it going off the canvas on me suddenly. So the first part I'm going to draw in is the circle that is my ram. Mm -hmm. He is just a little round fat circle. And you think to yourself, surely he is more <laughs> than <laughs> just that. Well, he's got a little bit of a nose that comes off in a bit of a point, like a thimble. That's it. That's his little face. And there's a lot of fur, so that gives us tons and tons of room. And I very much like his legs because they're points. So when I go to put his little legs in, really all I'm doing is these little sort of pointy points. You know, where he comes in and he's got little pointy points on his little legs. There, now he's attached to the mountain. That's all you really need for that. A gnome, on my gnomes, the big part is that they've got their beard and their hat, and I know I want at least this much area to take up beard. So I'm gonna sketch that in over here. If you're ever wondering how I just sort of sketch my gnomes in, this is this is how we get there. So if I think to myself, there's his beard, you gotta find your beard. I'm gonna give him a nose. Noses are nice. And his nose has this really fun hat that's very furry. So we're gonna make sure that the furry hat is covered here. Furry hat. Furry hat. I like to tell myself by line where the hats are going to go so that before I ever even put in the little crookeds, I kind of have a sense. And that's how I have my little bendy gnome hats, which is a little bit unique to us over here is our little bendy gnome hats. And since then he's got this little bendy gnome hat, he has a little bit of a fluffy, fluffy little gnome gown. This is mountain gnome gown. Ah. Right? Yeah. You know, and we'll do his little horn. He does have a horn that goes like this, but we just do it with paint. Now, once we have this, then I can go, there's a mountain. So let's give him a mountain. And it's jaggedy. It's going to come down like that. And another, oh, so like Disney-esque little jaggedy mountain. Now, when I have a jaggedy mountain, I got to give it that little two sides of the mountain. The dark side and the light side. 
I have an actual 15 minute video where we use this technique to do a mountain and a fall tree. So let me come up here and make this little mountain over here. He's a little distant fellow. At his top peak, we're going to add his little dark side. And then I like this manor horny one over here. It kind of came higher. So I bring his little peak down. Little spires almost. Little spires. When you're an artist, you get to create wonderful fantasy landscapes. And this one can be up and down going off. So this little center line, one side will be lighter and one side will be darker. Those are the sides of the mountain. Mm. Right. And then, of course, you know, we know we've got a little eye here. And then he's going to have his little nose and his little mouth. Sheeps. He's a little bit of an angry sheep. <laughs> he's an angry shipple. That angry. He's defiant. Defiant shipple. I always have disgruntled, slightly disgruntled, off-putting animals. Because <laughs> I give them the down lid. I give them the lid that's like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't like it at all. All right, that's a like, step. That's a step. That's a step. Like, like the third one. Mm-hmm. We can do step that. three for you and me. Step three, it's the best to be. I know this video was a minute getting here, and we had to do some juggling getting ready for acrylic April. Uh, we are doing the next gnome. Um, it may be dropped in conjunction with acrylic April or right after acrylic April happens. I'm, I'm still working out my calendar to make sure that I've got a nice flow for you guys. Otherwise it gets, it gets to be a lot. And I try to think about it. if you're doing 18 plus and you're doing acrylic April, how would that be? Or if you're doing the gnomes and you're doing acrylic April, how that would that be? And so I try to think about it. If you're doing watercolor and acrylic April, all I can tell you is you gave it both and you're just hustling extra hard this month. <laughs> you're hustling as hard as me. Hmm. Being a Sherpa for a minute. Mm. Coffee break. Coffee break. So let's put in the two sides of our mountain. And I'll just use, this is a number eight arch of a cat's tongue. It is a filbert with a slight point in it, right? So pointed filbert. You could use a filbert or a braid. It's not important on this technique. I'm just telling you what I have. I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine blue and some of my Mars black. I'll mix them together. Make kind of a very dark Payne's gray. Get a little white into it, but I still want this to be the dark side of the mountain. So you got to have it be fairly dark. Right? So that's the color that you're looking for is a fairly dark blue-gray. And you're going to paint this side of the mountain. Is this the shadowy side of the mountain? This is the shadowy side of the mountain. And no one has the right to judge your mountain. Hmm. They do not. It's not allowed. The mountain was here first. The mountain was here first. They can't come up and have all kinds of mountain opinions on how mountainy your mountain is. Hey, tell That's them not their right. And you saw it first, so you know what it looks like. Yeah. You're so. the witness to this mountain. They're not. But this mountain, both all the sides, this side and this side, same, same. That little gnomey guy. Yes, his gnominess. What's his name? I believe. Is that a community thing that they're voting on? Yes. And because I think you said something you about You tell that. them all about that while I'm painting the dark sides of the mountains. But you talk. I. <laughs> you do it. You do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have the mute button, not you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you download... Um, what it is is she's concentrating on those little wee lines. I am so... concentrating on those little wee lines. So he's got to work it out himself here. Um, uh, marital joking aside, if you check in the link in the description below, you'll find uh, some links to like the traceable, the coloring book, and all of the uh, materials that you'll need. What coloring book? Uh, I didn't mean coloring book. I meant. Um, <laughs> There's no mini book either. No, because it's a, it's a book at the end of the year. Oh, that's right. The book at the end. See, you can't leave me talking. I apparently can't. I was just testing him. I wanted to see how he was doing. Um, I, we do I'm allow our communities to name the gnomes. That's and right. when we post them up, sometimes we ask questions. So I haven't actually checked to see. You know what? If you have an idea for the name of the gnome, go ahead and throw it up. I believe he's named, though. I believe this is a named gnome. He I'm not sure. 
Look, the person who collects names has had a very traumatic day and is not available. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, ser- like in all seriousness, she's had a very well, she, traumatic she day. She reminded me. She was like, remind the community. That they're to name the gnome? Yeah. Oh, you guys are supposed to name the gnome. Okay, so that's what you needed to tell me. Is my, my mom I've... said name the gnome. Okay, so the gnome namer has officially said, you guys have to name this gnome. We don't name the gnome. And throw up the names, but the best place to put the names is in the comments. You know how we have the chat here? Chat, 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 chat. Don't do it there. Do it in the comments. Put the name in the comments and then upvote your favorites, and, and that's how we get to name. Hmm. That's what your mom said. She had a really hard day, so everybody needs to send her a lot of love. Clearly, all I know how to do is control the cameras. I mean, I had no idea, but I, I, <laughs> I am now informed <laughs> on the reality of our situation. <laughs> So I'm going to add a little more white to my paint. So I'm taking the white over here. This, if you just came in, was uh, ultramarine blue and Mars black in a fairly dark color. And now I'm going to make a lighter color. A lighter color. These are very simplistic little mountains, but they're a lot of fun to paint. Mm -hmm. And they're good first concept if you're trying to figure out how mountains are constructed. Sometimes simplistic drawings actually help you see and simplify what feels like something with a complicated nature. Notice I'm trying to lean to the right, not the left, John. I'm doing so good. You're doing really good. I feel like I'm doing really good. We can see... The mountain, the light side, and the dark side of the mountain. You can see the light and the dark of the mountain. You can know all your truths will come true. And be glad that I don't write any music. (laughs) (laughs) We're singing a song for you. I like your singing. So, uh, John. Yes. Okay, not to like uh, H3 podcast you, but Honey pulled me into that whole drama with uh, oh, man, with uh, Mark, you get, Mark. You're so drama, drama, drama. Well, okay, so it's like the Mark Charles drama, and then I guess he was doing like the next big influencer, and then they dropped him from the next big influencer. But here's the part I glommed onto. Honey was like all the drama and the the heartache, and and definitely hope all justice and everything. It, whatever that is, I don't know. Yes. Uh, I'm not an expert on it. Whatever it is, happens. For sure. But the part I noticed is YouTube says next season is going to be a different vertical. Ooh. (laughs) And I just thought, I'm sure it's not art. I'm sure it's not. Because they haven't even given us our own segment. But maybe, maybe eventually after they go through gaming and every other single vertical, like cutting things open and looking at them in slow motion and nature and education, all that stuff, all the other verticals, that eventually they would get to us. That would be cool. I would, I would like that. Yeah, I would too. Maybe. James Charles, not Mark Charles. See? I would know. But they know, because they are also up on the drama. That is true. They know. And if you find yourself at home going, I did not know that and didn't know I needed to know that. Now you know it. Now you know it. I'll tell you all kinds of things you didn't know. Like the Irregulars wasn't a fan on Netflix. If you're clicking at it, like it sounds like it could be good. It's such a great concept. Yeah, not a fan. This sounds like a step. Sounds like a step. Is it? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I got to cut my bangs. You- I didn't see the step go up. I haven't put it up yet. Oh, I was okay. looking for the button. I just... I- over here. Does he seem like he's just not throwing the stuff up in a timely way? I mean, it's like, come on, dude. <laughs> nah, I'm going to give it to you. Reach your hand in. Be seen. <laughs> Let the top of your head be seen for once. Top of your head filming. So listen, if you're brand new and you're like, oh my gosh, are these people going to talk through all the video? Yes. Yes, we talk and teach and talk and teach and it's an entertaining video. That's what we do. I keep getting these things like, are you going to talk the whole video? I love answering those comments because I'm like, yes, everyone, all 1,200 of them. (laughs) Have you ever said so many words in your life? You have not. (laughs) And then I very kindly remind them that there's a lot of great content out there that's quiet, and they can also watch that. Mm -hmm. All right. 
The next step, well, we are letting this all have a thing that I like to do. What do you like to do? I like to draw. I like to draw my mountains. I like to draw my mountains. I like to draw my mountains. Try Try it. Okay. Give it a try. I pushed the mute button. And, man, that's, I like the little mountain, though. I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, that was fast. That was it's a, fast a very track. fast thing. That was just a... Just a... Psh, psh, psh. I like to drum I didn't just... even have a chance to wind up a... You shouldn't use heat. <laughs> You're okay. You guys are probably okay. It's not going to... It's not that serious. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Not today. Okay. So we're going to take a little... We're going to make sure we our brush is dry, which means not a lot of water in the brush. And we're going to load up some black paint. And we're going to come here. And a few places we're going to add... Some oh. rough little black marks. I just use the edge of my brush. And what we're talking about is the deep dark stone of the mountain. For the for the for the smog who lives under here. You know, it's gotta have some iron or something, something worth mining for the dwarves. This is true. Come here and Make little different marks. I'm making these randomly because then we come back with snow. I'm going to make some kind of fun. You can come along an edge here and pull some out. That's also, also kind of a cool thing. And then you can even make um, ledges here. Like if you come in here and bring a little bit out, you're like, oh, there's some ledges. You're like, I didn't know there were ledges. And you'd be like, yeah, there's ledges on the mountain. Hmm. Ledges on the mountain. I'm going to rinse that out. Guess what I'm going to do? You're going to dry it? Yes. Okay. You dry it. How did you guess? Because, um. White and black make gray. <laughs> So what she means by that is that when you put the next layer on top there, you want this layer to be dry. And the reason why you want it to be dry is because the uh, <laughs> if you uh, don't, then um, when you put white on, it will pick up the uh, black underneath it and make it just sort of muddly gray. Muddly gray, muddly gray. We don't want no muddly gray. <laughs> Very weird day today. So now I'm going to dry brush white paint. This is a very good time. I'm going to come back here. Come along the back of this mountain. What makes it a dry brush? It's not got a lot of water in it. So you're using it straight from the tube? Almost straight from the tube. The brush is just barely damp. That's why I wipe it out on the towel. Because I want it to be kind of very damp. You want a lot of the mountain underneath to show through. Because that's what helps the snow come. Now we're not going to do the dark side of the mountain, guys. With the bright white snow. Don't do that. Bright white snow goes on the bright side of the mountain. Oh. Got to be super careful about that. Little random snow flurries. Yep. Snow flurries. I feel like Deadpool painting today. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm watching my language. So don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, but I got a real Deadpool inner vibe going on. Do you? I really do. That's a problem. I can feel it. I'm like, oh, I want to say something, but I'm not going to. Nope. Mm -mm. This is this is what for the after shows are for. No, I think I'm I'm like deep into Deadpool. Oh, <laughs> Deadpool yeah. movie one, actual comic. All right, so I'm going to come here and make almost a white, but just a little bit blue, right? A little bit blue. A little bit blue because it's on that cool side of the mountain. Oh, and that's why you were saving the pure white for the other side of the mountain. And that's why, yeah, that's why it's got to be over here. And you want it to be, you got to kind of definitely be able to see the blue in it. Mm -hmm. There we go. So that it pulls out as different from. A little bit of that there. Okay. 
Luella is like, we need to do a Deadpool unicorn tutorial. <laughs> we so do. That's what, you know, that's a, we could, we could put that on the. Get them to make another Deadpool movie and I will. <laughs> put some little black back out here. And the last little touch on the mountain here. I'm going to use fluid white paint. You could just thin your white paint. But I have this fluid to use up, so I'm going to use it. The reason it's sometimes nice to use fluid paint, and I, I'm going to use him in also my little uh, ram as well, is that it doesn't have to be thinned with water. I'm going to use a number one monogram liner. But basically, you just want a brush that gives you a fine detail. I'm going to come along the top of the mountain. And define its jaggedy little edges. See how we're defining its jaggedy little edges? Yeah. Give it a little jaggedy edge. That's that's how it gets that definition going. Come down maybe this side of the mountain. And down the middle. Jaggedy edge, jaggedy edge. Your mountain a jaggedy edge. There we go. Look at it, a jaggedy edge. And so just that nice bright line. If you can't get the golden titanium white fluid acrylic, because that seems like a crazy amount of money for white paint, craft paint works as well. You get white craft paint. Same body of paint. So that's the thing sometimes people don't know is the bottles are soft body or fluid, right? The ones that look like ink wells, those are high flows. And the ones that come in tubes are heavy bodies. That's another way to tell them apart. Now that golden paint, there's a little difference. between. There's it. a huge difference, which is why I bother. It's highly pigmented and it's not thin. And it really gives a strong impact to your eye. So, and, and you always say the first place to upgrade your colors is, in is the, your white. Because it, it can make the biggest difference in the painting. It really does. It makes the biggest difference in your little painting experience is like upgrading your white. But there we go. You have some mountains, some majesty. Let's dry it. I'm going to miss this you paint so it, it doesn't dry out. I'm not drying it. You, well, we're going to dry it. They and I are going to dry it. I will watch. Dry it with me. Because you're painting, you're painting, you're painting along with cinnamon. Am I? They are. I'm, I'm painting I'm, along with cinnamon. You are. That's true. I paint along with myself, me, myself, and I. Sure, this is like the second time she's painting along with herself because this is the second time she's painted it. So if this is your first or second time painting with us, then hello. And don't forget, click to get, don't forget to click the subscription button below. I have this weird like five millisecond delay on everything I say. So every once in a while I have to get confused by things. Are you there? Okay, there it goes. Am I, am I where? No, no. I just want to make sure that I wasn't. Uh, I had the appropriate. I'm going to heat my coffee. Do we have a free kid in homeschool I that can heat one. coffee? <laughs> ah, oh, homeschool. We have, to, we have to step this It's made heating way. coffee much easier. Now, also, it's reminded me how much I don't know about math. Just new maths. <laughs> Whatever that is. Mike, why? Why did you all do that? It didn't make it easier. I just figured out where to carry the one. Now I can't carry no ones. I got a group. Tens? What? Gotta watch Kumon videos myself to know what's going on. I love how there's videos to help parents with new math. They're like, did they change all the rules on you suddenly in more ways than one? And now math doesn't even make any sense? Here's a video. <laughs> what is the dog doing? She tried to take your sock. <laughs> Come here, Twixie. Oh, so mean to you. Step right. and picture. Now you're step gonna tell and us picture. what are we doing in this next step? We're going to be painting the sheep black. It's going to be a black sheep at first. At first, he'd be very black sheep. And then he can be a white sheep as he, you know, comes to. I actually like to do a very dark kind of underpainting on he and the gnome. So we'll do the blocking in part of those two figures. Because the, did she just take something? Oh, where are you taking it? She's like, he's like, no, you can't be here. Oh, me took me go. I feel like she should wear costumes and visit, but that's just me. That's just me. Step five. Don doesn't want Twix to steal his song. <laughs> Actually, what is this? She gets on the foot pedal and she keeps changing the cameras. <laughs> no? 
Oh, he's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> how are you guys at home? Is everybody okay? I didn't take any questions yet. Yes, no, I've, I've actually been. We're over kind here. of at the halfway through point. If we want to take some questions. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Before let's we see move you. on to the second half. <laughs> Miss this. My wet palette is currently indisposed, which is why I'm using my old peel palette. Uh, let's see here. Going back to the top. Going the, back to the They top. were asking for the traceable. Now, where is the traceable located? On the website. If you go to theartsherpa.com, there's a traceable button. You click it. It's going to open up to all the traceables, and you can search GNOME. You can also go to the video page from the calendar, and it will have the GNOME uploaded into that as well. We've got, we've got a, what we have is a lot of community talking and answering questions for each other. So I'm. Gosh darn it. You guys they, know they, all the answers actually, to all the questions because you've really, watched hundreds of videos and now you know everything. They're this is kind of awesome. The brushes like in the back. When they the traceable. They want to know who you dash your hair. Who does my hair? I do my hair. I got to do it today too. I got to do my roots. I do. Oh, okay. This is getting there. I didn't know. I try to give the illusion. I like it when I go out and people are like, is that your natural color? I like when they actually ask me that. I know they don't think it. I know it's not an honest question, but I like to be like, yes. <laughs> they do not think they, they do not think you're boring at all. Nobody thinks I'm boring? No, they think that you are the good, not boring channel. Oh, God. I just can't do the boring thing. Because here's what. I try to make art education that I would watch because I love the other stuff, but I also fall asleep in the middle of it. So I figure for learning, you want to be awake. For relaxing, you want to build chill out. For learning, you want to be awake, awake, awake. Mm. Mm. And do you have a video on how to prepare your wet palette? Yeah, I don't, but I'm making one because I have a weird thing that I do. I realize that I do mine maybe differently than other people mm. and that my way of doing it might be cool to share cool so i'm gonna make a video on how to do what out but basically here's the deal. i'll just tell you i get my tea kettle out and i boil up some water i take about five or six sheets and in a pan that will hold the water like one of the disposable basting pans i put some of the hot water in i put a sheet down pour more hot water sheet down pour more hot water until they're all covered then i take the sponge put it on top pour hot water on that i leave that for a bit when that's cool enough to touch i take the sponge out and i slightly wring it out i want it to be damp I put one sheet of the wet pal paper on top and the other backup sheets on the bottom. They'll stain a little bit through the sponge, but I don't really care. I just want to be able to grab one and I need one. I can reuse one of the top sheets. I can reuse the current palette sheet I'm working on until it either becomes too colorful to tell what's on it or I let paint dry on it. Hmm. That's the whole big thing. Oh, and I, I get the moldy smell out of my palette with my Art Sherpa soap. Because much like everything... Real soap cleans stuff up. It's true. It's that's so that's true. Clean, oh my gosh. Clean, clean oh my gosh. Soap. Okay, I'm gonna, I am going to go on to step five. Don't down thumb because you want to hear this. So last night we're watching how to make everything and they're like how to make snow from olives. And I'm like, but like in an old timey way. And we used to do historical reenactment. So we watched it. it mm. And it broke John. He was like, don't do that. Why are you doing that? You know, you could, this was another tool that was available at the time that would do this job easier. You could have, if you have concrete, you can cast this other tool. What are you doing? And he's like, he's like, but I knew it was no soap when I went and collected water at the lake. And it was so funny. I'm sure, I'm sure that they went bust or buy chemicals for the second oh, batch. Yeah, no, I was like <laughs> soda ash from the lake. Yeah. No. No, no, you, you are not making soap, my friend. Also, that's not where anyone got soda ash. That's not where pioneers got soda ash. Ugh! So this is why YouTube is not always a historically what, accurate thing. So what I'll say is unless you have made a couple thousand batches of soap and it's second hand. Yeah. You're not making soap out of anything except chemicals that come from the store. <laughs> <laughs> if we weren't so busy, we would have made a response video. We'd be like, Sherpa makes soap. But anyways, so, all that, right, on to the next bit. Do you want that step up there just again so they know uh, we're, we're, we're on that step? We're officially I, on that step. We're officially five on that step. I took too long, I know. It was a step five. It was a It was a 4.5, point. It was a You got to hear me monologue like a villain. Some, You know what? I teach art for free, and for that, you listen to my monologues. You got some pre-five conversation. So I'm going to paint in my basic sheep shape. All right. There's a basic sheep shape. He's got a good shape. Love your sheep. Some sheep are fat. Some sheep are skinny. Your sheep is fine. Trust that your sheep has value. No bagging on your sheep. Mm -hmm. So 
This particular sheep, he's more nose up. I think my last sheep was more nose down. He doesn't does. matter. It he's is. a happy little sheep. He's looking around. Okay. So I like to, when I come up on the back up here, a thing that I do is I curve up the brush stroke a little bit. Can you see me curving that up? And I do that to kind of build, build his fur. And he's got little tiny, little tiny little weird pointy legs. Why? Because I felt like it. I thought it was funny. So I did it. He's outside the gate growling at you, John. That's okay. Oh, <laughs> she's like, Meh. wanted sock. Just give her a dirty sock. Oh my gosh, she knows I can hear her. So she's picking up. <laughs> <laughs> when, when it's not the kids anymore disrupting the video, when it's the dog one, I just want my sock. The stinky one on your foot. All right, we're going to make some little hairs going down. And I get, we're doing those little S-curve strokes. See how those little S-curve strokes go? And that's how we're going to build up the base of the fur. I think I'm going to make his fur fly out this way this time. Because I feel like it. There. So base sheep. Base sheep. Now base gnome. The underpainting of gnome is the brown and black. Just so you know. Just so you know him. Mm. We're going to go brown and black for his base. Not pure black. Brown and black. We don't do the fur color with this color because we're going to do the fur color in our snow color. Dark snow color which was our ultramarine, a little bit of Mars black and white. Mostly uh, ultramarine, though. There you go. He likes that. He says it's good. I love his little, like, tanned hide outfit. Yeah. Makes me super happy. <laughs> He's rugged. I go a little more... I'm going to go black and brown again. Oh, I'm going to have to put some white on him to see his horn. I just realized that. <laughs> he needs some white. I'm rinsing out because I'm changing colors. The next color is a little bit of ultramarine blue. A smidge of Mars black. And some titanium white. That dark snow color that we had. Mm. We're gonna come here and blow his little beard. Little beard goes woo. Okay, some brown gone on it. We don't mind. Just make it look more like hair. That's how we get his little beard. Rupali asks a really good question. What's the good question? Why don't you advertise all your product between the sessions? It'd be a wonderful <laughs> video. The shirt would be would be great to watch you showing that. And I'm like, <laughs> well. oh my gosh! And fully, like I said to John, I should also have like in between sessions there should be like and a quick tip how to wash your brush and a quick tip how to reshape your brush. I should have quick tips between sessions but and advertisements, all kinds of things. Like it could be informational and amazing. And then I just think I just what I say to John is what I always say after a curly camera. <laughs> it's like a billion <laughs> episodes. So yes, we have all these things coming. Yeah, we are thinking that. And please keep shouting out those ideas because you guys are super clever. And sometimes you think of amazing stuff that didn't even occur to us. I can't tell you how often what was it we just realized oh yeah that seth myers has a show on a regular network we've been watching on youtube so long it's like there's like <laughs> do you know that there's this thing called television and network television and if you go you can watch a television show when it airs and i was like what, what? <laughs> So, TV, oh my what? God. So, when we went back out and found out. Making a little blue and white come above here. Yeah, it was a surprise to us. And I we had not thought of it. So, sometimes you guys will be like, this is probably a stupid idea that they've thought of. Don't count on it. We may not have. We forgot there was even TV. Hmm. So, 
you might be helping us out quite a lot. Did you know that NBC is this network on television? I totally forgot. Like, so seriously, I forgot. I'm just coming here making a little bit of a bumpy, bumpy rough. This is called blocking in. This is where we're painting in an object. It's rough spaces and elements. And the last thing we're going to paint in is a little bit. A little bit. I might even put a little bit of yellow in it. I'm going to, mostly the yellow is here for the brown for the tan leather, but I like to add it a bit to the pink for his nose. Innova says he's on Hulu, so there must be some sort of, like, he must have some technologies. He's also on Hulu. Okay, cool. I'll we'll have to check that out. I did not know. Is he not, like, an official show? No, I think he is. He's got, like, a... The... I mean, because it seemed like he was on NBC. Yeah. Seemed like it, but you know. Now. We want to dry this so we can do the magic. So this is like that part where you're like, I feel like I clicked this channel to think I was going to paint something, but I don't see how this is going to go from here to there. Hi, welcome. You're going to love how it turns out. <laughs> um, yes. Let's try it. Okay, try it. Okay. I will go read questions from the community. Read questions. And engage with them. So, oh yeah, one of the things, do make sure you thoroughly dry between the steps because that's important. What it does is it allows you to make sure that as you put your next layer of lighter color on, um, they don't muddle because you don't want your uh, beard to not have crisp, beardy bits um, and highlights. And those highlights can easily get muddled if the underpainting is not thoroughly dry. Mm -mm -mm. You're not stepping up, are you? I'm stepping it. <gasps> oh, no. I'm stepping up. Ah. Okay. That's see my here. dance moves. Push a button, make it happen. I can do the floss, but you can't see it. <laughs> All right. So in the next step, we're going to start pulling the sheeple, the ram, uh, him in together, uh, give him his fur and his personality and his face and his character, which is really actually quite a lot of fun. Um, if you haven't gotten to paint this ram and then you'll want to put little rams all over the place. You'll dot them in fields. You'll add them to cards and shoes. You'll be just like, I love the ram. Me too. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is make kind of a black and blue over here with the white. We're going to make the uh, gray color of the ram face. We want this gray to bias a little bit blue. So I'm moving it more into the blue area and come here. And in his little face, a little bit blue. Just a little bit. Just a little bit blue. A lot of fun. Well, that's having a think. And you go a little more blue and some of our white. Some of our white into that. Going to. We want it real light though. Come here and start to give him furs. These are very curvy S strokes. Now, what makes these stroke work is the pressure you have on your brush. If you have light brush pressure, the line will stay fine. And if you release that pressure at the end of the stroke, it will taper. That's how you get those little fur ends that you need. And when we come here, I might, I know I'm going to be putting little curls of fur over him. So it's okay if I come back into my uh, little sheepskin there. Actually, it's kind of horrible that the nun that's riding him is wearing something made of him. <gasps> how do you know just, that? <laughs> just put that together. It could be chicken. Maybe, maybe it's Yeti. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> maybe it's a Yeti coat. What could it be? Could Snow be, Squatch. What about flax? Or Snow Squatch. Nope, nope it's Snow Squatch. <laughs> <laughs> it's made of Tauntaun. <laughs> you, just, you go dark fast. I do. I do. I do go dark fast. It's weird because I try to be a very upbeat person, but I do go dark fast. <laughs> 
bring some little little sheep of fur out here. It's very good. Now on here, while I have the lighter color, it's a little more blue. I'm going to go ahead and kind of highlight his face a bit. The little trick is, is that his nose is going to come right here, mm -hmm. comes back. And so you want to make sure that the highlight acknowledges that. You can always come back with a shadow if you lose it, so don't be too panicky or worried about it. It's okay. I think it's nice when he has bangs. <laughs> He's got some bangs. He does? Yes, he does. Some bangs. At this stage, let's dry him. All right. Quick dry. Quick dry. And this is so that the little sheep fur, again, doesn't get pick up the color below it. Um, or the toned uh, furs, but if you'd like to do furs of a different color, different style, different thing, on mm -hmm. the web, uh, I was saying, if you didn't like this first style and you wanted a different first style, you go to a website, theartsherpa.com, and the search button, go to, well, actually, go to videos, then go to search, I don't and like then my fur. Fur. I'm just saying, if you want fur It's options, okay, you can want different fur. I'm not all at all upset. I'm going to take a little bit of black and I'm taking some water over to it and I swirl it around in the paint that helps thin that heavy bodied paint. And I'm going to load that on the tip of the brush. And I'm going to start to give his little features some credence here. So let's come right here and be like, you have a nose. See? There's his little yakum noses, his little, his little ram nose and his disgruntled mouth. <laughs> he makes me happy. And his little disgruntled eye is going to go here. The trick to this is the lid's got to, to get it disgruntled, the lid needs to go kind of basically flat. <laughs> and a little dot underneath. See, he's already like, I'm on this mountain. I'm on this mountain, I don't know. Ridden by this murderous gnome. <laughs> 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 it is a murderous little gnome if you think about it, though. <laughs> I suppose we make a lot of assumptions about gnomes being peaceful little creatures. <laughs> I'm adding some little eyelashes. I like eyelashes coming off of my little ram. Yeah. I feel like that helps him. It does. A bit. It softens the eye. While his face is drying, I'm going to do some of this fur work on the gnome's beard. All right. As we can, and it's similar. Similar fur work. I'm going to make that light blue. Kind of color, still very light. Not the lightest color that we have, but still very light. Travels along here. Mm -hmm. It's a little fur path. Well, I guess it's not fur. He's got hair. Hair. I like to make these longs, lines long and flowy. Don't give him a tangled beard. And it's important to leave a little shadow because that helps give things shape. And you do want them to have shape, don't you? There we go. That's looking good. Yeah. So that's having a dry, and this is dry. So I can take a little bit of my white paint, thin it with water. This is my heavy body. I don't want it quite as thin as my fluid paint. Hmm. I come above the nose and do a little highlight along the top of his head. So we've got almost three values, right? A little bit of highlight there. The other highlight, uh, other thing I want to do is I come in and make a nice little blush. He's got a nice little yak blush or uh, ram blush. Mm. A pink cheek under his eye. Because <laughs> he does. 
And while I've got pink, I can come in and highlight this nose on top. Oh. That nose has a highlight now. Very pleasant. Now we may get and use up this white paint. And this is kind of a fussy bed of kit. Are you using a particularly fussy brush? I am. I'm using my number one monogram liner. But if you didn't have that? Just any brush that gives you a fine line that you like. Just a brush that lets you have your fine lines. Now keep in mind, we don't want to be too, uh, do our best fur work right here because there's a big ram horn. Mm. You need to have it. It just doesn't need to be your best because you're going to paint right over it. I forgot my little finger palette. It's okay. It's okay. We're watching you. We're going to watch me get a lot of white paint. Do, do, do. You get the paint and make it work. Just bringing these little hairlines. We're defining the highlights of these little hairs and our very, very fuzzy little fellow. I could tell you a trick. Mm. If you reached over and grabbed the cap off of the Sherpa candle, the Sherpa studio candle to your oh, right. Oh, yeah, that would be good. I can also put it on my thumb. You could. Yeah, like on my thumb. <laughs> you could, I could, but it's already on the palette. I like hmm. to curve the back of his little fur in here. Kind of create some dimensionality. He's very fuzzy. Now, if you had a like a Scotty knife, could you just load it onto a you Scotty knife? You could just load it onto a Scotty knife, which I also have and could have done. Huh. I just didn't. Why didn't I? I have a T-square over here. I have it, a lot of tools over here. This paint could have gone on if and been drug over here. <laughs> yeah. So that I wasn't going back and forth. And sometimes we get so into our painting that happens to us. We're just so into the painting. You're in the zone. We're in the zone. We forget to do things like self-care. So this is a good example and a great introduction to my next part, which is that it's important to remember that when you're painting, you are in a different headspace, and you may forget to do things like take care of your body posture, drink water, you know, just basic human things. Mm. You know? Painting is almost meditative. Uh, in all studies, it's shown to access different parts of the brain. I'm going to add a little highlight above his little... No, now he's real mad. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is getting. This got to be close to a step, isn't it? We're almost to a step. Fur. Oh, look at that. I'm going to blend this out here because that's just... A, well, no, he's just going to be that mad now. That's okay. We like that. That's just gotta... very angry sheeples. I'm going to add a couple dots to his eye. Got some feels. I like it. All right. Uh, let's dry him and call that a step. I think that's a good. He's looking so sheepy. Okay, didn't get the button in time. But thank you guys for coming and joining us. We really appreciate it. Um... The Twix just re-arrived, which is what you're seeing over there. She's checking that out. But uh, in between all of the stuff going on, don't forget to dry between those layers. Make sure you get all that stuff done. We're distracted by dogs in our studio. She's come to visit. She, I don't know how she got in here because I put her on the other side of the gate because she comes over and tries to jump into my lap during the show. She Which got is, back in. She comes over She's and growls so sneaky. at me. She's so sneaky. You take a picture. She's so sneaky. Oh, yeah. I'll take a picture. You take a picture and I'll get her some cuddles. Because that's all that's wrong. She just wants some cuddles. She's just here to be encouraging and sweet. That's all it is. All it is. She just wants to be encouraging and see what's what. Do we have any treats? No treats. I should have treats always in here. I just don't like to encourage her to eat around the art supplies. Ooh. Okay. See, she got some love. She feels better. She's all waggy waggy. 
And out she goes again. <laughs> and she looks so disgruntled, like, oh, it didn't work. And the little dog, too. <laughs> ah. But it is important to remember to have some safety precautions to pet proof your art studio when you have animals coming in and out of your studio because sometimes they eat weird things and they can eat the paint and no, eat chemicals. And so, you know, some thoughts and caution. Do we have to step them? You got, did you already step? You know. photographed it and stepped, didn't you? I don't think I had the step button up. All right. Just, this is going to be the hardest to time stamp of anyone no, we've ever crazy. seen. And you're going to hear from the team. Okay. okay. Which is really the volunteers, but still. I'm going to thin out some of my black paint here. Thinning, thinning, thinning. And what I'm doing is taking one drop of water over at a time and incorporating it thoroughly through the paint to thin its viscosity. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to draw a little circle. That's the first part of putting in his horn. You got to put in his horn. Now the top of the horn is thicker. And then as it curves around, it is thinner, but it also twists. So this is important that you, you're going to catch the twist and everything about that. All right. While this is drying, because we got to do two tones in it, we'll come up here and take this before this paint is completely dried out maybe and use up the rest of the white fluid. Ah. Number one monogram liner. So I was just using a number four round for my art sharp line, but you can use any brush that gives you a good point that you have control over. And I really want to say, uh, I was noticing a post in group. If ever you're unhappy with the brushes, and I don't care if it has my name on it, you contact the manufacturer and you show them what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Always. And I would not have worked with Silver Brush if they did not have a return policy. And my relationship with them is entirely based on how they treat you. So you just know you come first in my heart. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if you need customer support or help, it's always okay. Hey. And he was saying that they were worried to ever, like, you know, if shipping came in wrong or anything was wrong. Because they didn't want to cause trouble for me. And it just doesn't does not cause any trouble for me. And I want you guys to learn to be savvy consumers that stand up for yourselves. I'm just taking these lines, little curved lines that sort of follow the run of the beard. Creating a sense of a, a nice blowing beard, gnome beard. In his little uh, yak. And sometimes you, I might even bring some more lines down to my yak if I feel like he needs more hair to be is a it sheep or a sheep yak or he, a ram. It's what a ram. It? It's a ram. I don't know. Whatever the mountain one is. It's a turducken. It's a turducken. A rare black spined mongoose. I don't know. I'm not really sure. It's the thing that they have for Aries. I think it's a ram, which is the other reason it's on the mountain. I think yaks also are in the mountain, and that's why I mix them up in my head. I have never been to a mountain, so I have not seen yaks. Well, I've never been to this kind of mountain. I didn't assume you had. I assumed that you had some yak-based research. No, no yak-based research. <laughs> what? You didn't do the research for your Aries painting? Well, but it's definitely not a yak. It was a ram. So I did ram-based research. Okay, well, so then... I did no yak research. Okay, well, you're okay then. I'm just saying yaks live on mountains. Oh. That's all I'm saying. Yaks live on mountains. That's a good answer. That's all I'm saying. So when this is uh, nice and done, I'm going to take a little bit of my white paint over to my brown. A little bit of my white paint over to my brown. Even get a little yellow into it, which is skinning a bit, but that's okay. I just want to be able to draw in the turn of the horn. So that's burnt sienna, cad yellow, and white. I'm going to come on this inside. And 
and bring this little turn of the horn through. See that? Just to draw that out to see where I know where that is. Mm. I do, I know where that is. So the color is a little of our cad yellow and our burnt sienna and some titanium white. Maybe a little more. A touch of black into it. There we go. Horn color. Very similar to leather color. Raheel says, if you have seen a yak, you would not be confused by what this is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm one taking it Raheel has seen a yak. <laughs> It's like, no, they're not. No, if they're, I don't know. He didn't say that. He just said they're very large, much bigger than this, and different colored. <laughs> okay. Well, in all fairness, I've seen no yak. I have, you know. Yakety yak. Don't talk. I haven't seen only, a yak. My only yak reference is to a early I've seen a 90s goat. telephone. And uh, sheep. And coming back with some black to do. Chat box. It was called yak box. Oh, I don't no. Know Are you really? Yak chat or something like that. It was like, it was oh my like you got it with a console. I cannot believe I you are referencing yak chat. Do you remember that? Yeah, that's bad that you're referencing that. But that's very old. Are you on yak chat? Do I need to feel bad for you? No, I mean like the, I, the, the box, the technology to connect. We were like, how can we not connect to their servers? But and use, use it. So yeah, I was, you know, there you was know. stuff happening. But what you doing there? You're painting. I am coming back and refining the curve of the horn color and the black color, making those nice. I'm going to rinse this out, and I'm going to grab some black. I'm going to come on the inside of the horn. Exaggerate things. We got a little dark line, and then we're going to shade, shade inward. Mm. Little curve lines. These represent the ridges on the horn. Ram is a male sheep. That's what this is. Okay, so. And it's on a mountain. Does that make it a mountain ram? I don't know. <laughs> but I have a sheep story. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. I'm only going to tell it if they say they want to hear it. I'm not going to tell it if they don't want to hear because, it. Because because now they're now they say have no. to ask for it though. If they want to hear the sheep story of the mouton aggressive, what are you doing with? The... I'm adding white highlight lines to the ram's horn with my number one monogram liner. If they want to hear the story of the, the mouton the aggressive, steps. yes, they want uh, between the steps. You can't. You have to tell them then. Okay, between the steps, I will tell you the story of les moutons aggressives. So before I do this last little part here, mm -hmm. I'm going to want to dry it. Okay. And the drying happens because detail work requires dry layers. And she's, you know, trying to get it done. All right. Because he needs more hairs. Oh. We don't want the black to pick up in it. Ah, that's what I thought. Right. We're going to make sure that he's got a little bit of fur going over his little ram horn. Doesn't that look make it look pretty? It does. And he's got a little fur. Yes, so they definitely. The delay is <laughs> echoing what I already. Yes, the mouton aggressive. But uh, she has to. She has to do her job first, folks. I'm going to outline his little pink nose in white. Got to teach the. And we're going to add a little reflection of one, two, three dot reflection. Man, two is pretty good, but I'll go ahead and give it three because he's just stellar, my star gnome. And we'll call this a step. Yeah. And then we'll finish his little jerkin and we'll be done. Is that a jerkin? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Could be. You know, I don't feel like I have to know anything because I can Google everything anymore. Ask Alexa or ask Siri. Shh, and Siri. Shh. You're, you're going to all respond if you say that. <laughs> Everyone in the house. <laughs> it just occurred to me. They don't listen to me when I try to get their attention, but of course they listen to me when I don't want them to. Okay, so, les moutons aggressives. All right, so we're in France with my mother in Depict du Nord, which is the top of the mountains of Carcassonne. 
And uh, we had stayed in uh, the village of Esperanque the year before. And so we come back up in the upper mountain. And if there's this lake up at the top and it's just gorgeous and the air is amazing and the bread trucks and everything is great. It's like kind of hard to get up and down, but uh, it's pretty nice. And the mountain separates up. If you know France, it's the, it's the one that separates up Carcassonne and Lazabet. So we're at the top and my big thing was to like go take walks. And John, we would stay there for long extended periods of time painting. And John would come up uh, to visit us, uh, uh, my mother and I when we were there. And so he's coming up and we're going to take this walk. And I, there was this walk around the lake, but I, every once in a while in the distance, I would see like sheep, like sheep. And I was really afraid of wild pig at this point. Like that's what I was afraid of. And I was constantly on looking out for like the wild boars because wild pig is a scary, scary thing. And they hunted up there all the time. So I'm like looking out for wild pig. And then there's this incredibly fluffy, like amazingly fluffy sheep because we're, we're walking along the road. There's the lake. There's this hill like right here and a little sheep fence in this hill. So the sheep is like kind of like this to us. And he comes up and he's just all shaggy and he's all of this stuff and he's so cute. And we look at, okay, we look at him and he looks at us and there's that weird pause, that weird pause that you have between you and, you know, wild things, right? And he's looking at us and he's big eyes and they got the crazy slits and, uh, I'm like, just as I'm like, ah, oh, like about to ah oh, to John, this thing goes, nah! like its mouth opens up and the tongue comes out. And I'm like, whoa, right? I'm like, oh, that's a scary sheep. And then like from Braveheart, right? Like right out of that, it's all true. of a sudden the whole hill is full of these fluffy, scary, aggressive sheep. While Heather did a tongue sticking out at you going, ah. and it's going, ah. They're all going like that. To us. <laughs> so we went running you're like, back. You're like, well, I don't want to be here that bad. <laughs> so we went running back to the village because we're like, I don't want to find out if, she, like, I don't think sheep are meat eaters. That, that, I'm pretty sure they're not meat eaters, but pigs could eat meat. And, and fence, I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, that fence was not confidence. No, it was like a flimsy fence. And we're like, so we were back in John's tall, but he's like, that's too many sheep, babe. I can't take that many sheep. <laughs> I was like, like one they, sheep, I fight it out, but there's too many there sheep. Was, there was like a couple hundred. There was sheep. even one little baby sheep that was yelling at us. Oh yeah, no, they all. The little baby sheep was like what pushed it over the edge. So we're like back, and uh, the guy who had the geet was like, "Oh, how was your walk?" And I'm trying to be like, "We're trying to tell him, but my French is not good." And I'm like, "Le mouton agressif, agressif, le mouton." <laughs> And he just laughed. He's like angry sheep because his English is just fine. He's like, what do you mean there's an angry sheep? So that's my uh, sheep thing that I had. Uh, and now I'm right. afraid of sheep. So, okay. All right. Woo! This is the end On to the next step. And, and yes. here we go. Oh, now you can now you can have some coffee and begin. Yeah, your I can step. have my coffee. So I just begin. that I will probably tell that story again at some point. I'll be like Rachel Ray and the story of her sister that bakes. I'll be like that, but you'll hear it again in the future. Mm. A lot of pressure on that sister who bakes. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if her sister had a national TV show is famous for cooking? She's like, I'm not the baker. It's my sister. And then you show up at a paper party and people are like, hey, aren't you Rachel Ray's sister? What'd you bring? What'd you bring? What snacks do you got? <laughs> right? Did you bake anything? No pressure. Okay. I bet so you Martha gonna, Stewart had that too. Like, does she have somebody in her family who baked? I don't think Martha, Martha Stewart had invisible interns. That's true. So I'm going to take Bert Sienna. Where's your crew? And cut yellow. <laughs> Mix them together. I'm at just a smidge of my black. I'm trying to make kind of like a tanned leather color. Get in there. Little, little, finding that tan leather color. And when I have that tan leather color, I'm going to come over here. Oh, that looks good. Looks very leathery. We're going to come here and just paint over. And I, I don't even mind if it's just a little bit kind of brushy because I want it to feel a little bit like brush leather. Throw up your sheep emojis for the sheep story. No. You know, that's the next emoji. Whenever we hit the next mes metric, I'll make an angry sheep. <laughs> Uh, what was that question? I thought I, had I don't know. I don't know where it was. You're in charge. There was some questions. 
I'm gonna go back and find it. I'm just brushing this in. I'll take it right up into the blue and just it's not a it's a kind of it's not quite a dry brush, but I am kind of doing a rough brush so that it's a bit like fluffy or matte looking a little like the leather. Then somebody points out Mazamet is a sheep processing area. Yes, now I know. Now I know why the sheep are mad. <laughs> the tanning area. So there we go. We got our that. Oh, that's what it was. We're going to add a little more white to our leather color. Let's come up here. And if you very carefully brush a line down the center of the hat, the top of the hat should be just a smidge lighter. Mm. So what was the question? Oh, are there going to be any girl star gnomes? I, ha I don't know. I haven't developed one yet. By the way, I can't, I'm going to be real honest on much like dwarf wives, they could have beards. I'm not really sure. I haven't really, I haven't we looked have into it. We have not determined this yet. Yeah, this, this is probably going to be some girly this notes. Is, this is some gnome, like, like. <laughs> I'm not sure of the gnome specifics. We have not asked a gnome personally where this boundary is. So we don't really know. This could I have, be, I have girl gnomed before. We have, there's like certainly been some. So I might again. More feminine parts. More feminine gnome. Femininity gnome. So we've added a light leather color to the top here and the original leather color to the back, kind of creating again, light side of the mountain, dark side of the mountain. Oh, the sides of the mountain. Mm, the lonely mountain. Was it the Evan star or the Evan stone that the dwarves dug up? Uh, uh, oh, uh, no, the... Um... None of that. Uh, Arkenstone. Arkenstone. That's right. There's no Arkenstone here. broke my brain when you were like the Evanstone. I'm like, e not Evan. It's like, <laughs> Marriage <wait." laughs> is long. Oh, okay. So we're going to make take this white paint and make little curls. Little curls. See the little curls? That's why the sheep is mad. I knew your jacket. We were friends. <laughs> so whose birthday is it for Aries right now, I wonder? Mm. If it's your if it's your birthday, you should leave a comment. Like Please so do. we definitely have the chat, which is great. But come back and leave a comment after the show and let us know it's your birthday. That way we can, you know Wish you a happy birthday ourselves. It. Yeah. Because it's like it's really hard for us to go back through the chat sometimes and catch all the messages but it's, it's really easy to see the ones you guys leave in the comments the, in the comments yeah so those are much uh i like to read those those are those are fun like sometimes it's hard to find stuff on facebook like i just recently had a bunch of people unfriend me but i have so many people friended to me i couldn't tell you who it is mm. or why it happened they could have quit fa facebook could have. They could have been mad. <sighs> could have been anything. I don't know. Too many friends. So I can't necessarily get all messed. They might be upset that I didn't answer my messages because I have too many messages. Um, it gets really hard for me to get through my Facebook messages. So, uh, so the comments on YouTube is actually a really good place to leave me messages because I, I make sure to get into the comments every day. Um, and it's a much better system for messages than Facebook. Facebook's Messenger, if you are not friended to me or friended to a friend of my friends, it puts your message in some kind of crazy box that I can't get into under the new, I can't get into it. Like it used to be hard to get into, but I can't get into it at all now under the new Facebook. We're just making little curls, little curly, curly furs. It's curly furs, John. I like it. Hello, curly furs. So Sandy says, female gnomes should have puffy pink pink tails instead of a beard. All right. And what I will say, Sandy, is that I'll I have it. been known to inadvertently pick up my daughter's pink scrunchie and use it for my pigtail because they don't hurt as much as rubber bands. And then I find myself. It is true. 
And then he I does find steal myself. the scrunchies. Yeah, and then I find myself all like, you know, I have to run to the grocery store, and I've got a mask on, and I'm running around. With the Bing scrunchie. <laughs> <laughs> and some beard poking out from around my mask. It's a, it's a special, special time in our so lives. I could be Noman. You don't know. You don't know. But, I, okay, I will definitely, I'll think about it. We got it, though. We got to it. Did you do Nomeo and Juliet? I did not do Nomeo and Juliet, but I should do Nomeo and Juliet. I did not. I did not. But I'll think about it. One will come to me. I'm always designing at night. I've got like a new cartoon to drop soon. I'm always like, if I have insomnia, I'm just like up at night drawing. I see just little, little squiggly, little curly. There's my hair. Squiggly oh, colors. <laughs> and then, choo -choo 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 -choo. last thing. I'm going to get some black thinned on my brush. Again, my number one monogram liner. I'm going to come up oh, the center of the hat. Center of the hat. And do the stitching. Stitch. There's just little short lines crossing the horizontal one. Little stitch lines on the toe of the brush. That's why sometimes it's nice to have a fine brush that will let you do something like that. You know who else might not, might not might be a nice couple to do? Hmm. Uh, Sir Nomalot and uh, Nomavir. Oh my gosh! Can you write these down for me so I don't forget? <laughs> I just oh, made that up. Did you? Yeah. That was from you. Yeah. You just made that up. Yeah. Sometimes he's so clever. All right. <laughs> So here we are at the of end of couples, our journey. So I was like, you know, like who else could be a cute couple? Well, there was, you know, Lancelot and Guinevere. With, oh, you could just gnomify him. Where'd you go? What did you do? Oh, you're, you're signing. That's just where we are today. You snuck the signing up on I me. I did. I snuck the signing up on you. But we've told the gnome. We've told the aggressive sheep story. We did. We have we <laughs> joked and played. Um, be sure and hit the subscribe button. If you want art lessons where we explain the steps and we show you everything and we write mini books and we give you traceables and all of that, and you enjoy the banter, mm -hmm. subscribe. Because this is where we do that. We do that all the time. Speaking of, this is the last class before Acrylic April 2021. Mm. Starting April 1st, every day at 11 is a new lesson uh, these lessons are sequential, which is they build skill into skill and concept into concept. There are 30 of them. It's, an, it's a daily uh, painting program. And um, you just come by every day. We use the same materials. This is just the palette that we use for 2021 and a set number of brushes. Each single painting will have its mini book done before the class. It has its traceable. It has its grid. It has all of its resources. And if you're on Facebook, if you're still on Facebook, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from the Archerba page. I'm going to go live and do a uh, walkthrough of the following day. So like the 31st, I will do one for April 1st. And then on the 2nd, I'll do one for the 3rd. Um, well, on the, yeah, on the 2nd, the 1st, I do one on the 2nd. On the 2nd one, I do one for the 3rd and the 4th because it's my daughter's birthday. And then you'll see me again on the 4th for the 5th. And we just the day before... So that you guys can be prepped. We're not doing just solid colors this year because we're doing water. This whole whole 30 days is about water and landscape. Mm. Kind of those sort of topics with a couple fun breaks, but it's really water and landscape. So if that's something you've been wanting to master and you want a program that's about that and you need that program to be free, we did it. Uh, if you want to not do all water, well, there's 2019 and 2020, which are about different things. So they're all about different random things. And I would love you guys to join us every day at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the channel uh, for those videos. And if you want to come by for the, uh, you don't have to do the pre-shows, not required. Yeah. And anyway, they're just there. If you're somebody who would like, uh, you know, to be able to ask some questions or get some extra instructions so you feel a little more calm and confident. Because here's the thing, and I'm going to say this tomorrow, but I'm going to say it now, just in case you don't come tomorrow. 
an acrylic April, you want the program to bend to your needs. You don't bend to it. It needs to bend to you. So nervousness and excitement, they can kind of feel very similar and they can become anxiety. And I want to remind you that this is art. We're going to just be painting. You cannot fail this. The only way to fail anything is to not try and not believe in yourself. If you need to adjust it to make it work for you, do that. That's my uh, monologue for my soapbox that I said at the end of the gnome. Uh, John's going to give you a slow walk, and I'm going to say, be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.